Why don't you start out with telling me a little bit about I Am They, uh, maybe a little bit about yourself. And we live in, a, in an area that doesn't get a lot of Christian musicians uh, that come in. Um, and so there's a lot of, uh, we, we have a, a Christian radio station, you know, that plays I Am They and, and plays some of your music. But I don't know that there's a lot of people that know a lot about I Am They in our area. So tell me a little bit about you and then a little bit about the band. Amazing, yeah. Um, we started in Carson City, Nevada, which is over towards the West Coast. Um, we never intended on being a band. And so that was kind of like the just the funny story of, of our group is we we all had other jobs and some of us were working in vitamin supplement stores. Some of us were working in, uh, you know, coffee shops. And I was a state worker. I worked for the state for about 10 years um, previous to this. And, uh, you know, sitting in my cubicle and filling out Excel sheets and what have you, um, you know, and then just leading worship in my church. And um, for me, I, I was a worship leader. I grew up playing drums, but um, about 15, picked up a guitar in my youth group and got put into just helping helping the church and helping lead worship. And um, I fell in love with that. Um, and then also the guitar, like, opened up the avenue of, of writing songs and things like that. So, Fast forward as a band, um, 2008, it was Halloween of 2008, and we came together for uh, what was supposed to be one night of worship, and uh, that was all we intended on. We didn't have enough people in one church to put together a full band, and so we had to reach out to other churches. We're like, hey, you play guitar, you know, we got a bass player over here, drummer over here. Let's, can we put together a worship team and, and you know, have this host this worship night? And maybe your church can come and your church can come. And so we did that. All these people turned up and there was two or three hundred people, which was like, you know, record numbers for, for our little town. And uh, we're like, do you guys want to keep doing this? And everybody was gung ho and enthusiastic about keeping it going. And so, you know, every few weeks we would just put together our favorite worship songs, you know, and it, we weren't writing songs at that time. We were. We were writing, I guess, other songs, but we weren't, we weren't I Am They. We weren't writing uh, the way we, I guess, are writing now. Um, you know, all of that was just brand new to us. And so we were just playing our favorite Chris Tomlin song or Davis or what have you. Uh, and different churches would come and participate. And we just got to see God do this awesome thing in the church where in worship, the church... The, like worship was the catalyst to uniting the church, the faith community in our area and, and hadn't really happened um, before that. And so it was awesome just to see the churches putting down their, their little differences or whatever, coming together and playing board games and having a night of worship. And we'd have food and fellowship afterwards and people getting each other and Hey, let's hang out or let's connect or let's do this mm. thing with, with, you know, between our churches. And um, so that was the whole heartbeat uh, of our ministry. And, you know, now as, as a band, I am they. Uh, I'll try to put this in a nutshell here, but we we basically got an opportunity in Southern California at a festival to play this uh kind of battle of the bands kind of thing we won this competition much to our surprise we had already gone back to our hotel uh but i got a call from uh my wife my wife now her name is tori she called me said they just announced from main stage that you guys won this competition and you're going to nashville to record a <laughs> single and so that was a shocker and then we ended up in nashville um and we just thought we were going to be playing frisbee and sightseeing and being tourists for the week while we tracked this single but then the producer we were working with uh said hey i love this song can i send it to my friends and his friends ended up being the five major record labels in nashville and so oh, then wow. that yeah so then that week we we got calls from all these labels and we were in in their conference rooms or whatever with their big big fancy tables uh you know and they were they'd sit back in their chair and Play me a song. Play me another song. You know, dance monkey kind of deal. And we were like, uh, just doing our band, you know, 
a couple of years later, actually, um, we got a couple offers from some of those record labels and track ended up signing and tracking a record. And the next year we were touring. And so, um, gosh, that seems really long, but that's probably as short as I can make our crazy little story that, that we have now here we are, you know, a decade about later. And, uh, it's just wild just to see all that God has done, um, through this ministry and, um, mm-hmm. And, and, and in, 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 even in, in us as a band, um, you know, our whole name, I am they, I feel like we've found out more about ourselves <laughs> than, you know, even the name I am they and what that really truly means. Um, we found out a lot about that just in, in walking out the last 10, 11 years. Man, I love that. That, that is a fantastic uh, story. Um, one of the things that we focus on as a ministry is we've said, listen, we're not going to compete with other ministries for the two yeah. hours a week that that people, you know, do church on Sunday mornings. There's a lot of great churches. There's a lot of great, you know, things going on in those two hours. What we want to focus in on is the other 166 hours a week. How do we encourage yes. people throughout the rest of the week in your story you know, it's just fantastic because that's exactly what it's about. You're all we're doing life and, and God just swoops yeah. in and turns the spotlight on and says, all right, let's let's make this a little bit brighter. And and we're constantly encouraging people in in our ministry. Like, listen, that's what it's about. You, there is no more sacredness about coffee that is served at the church than at Tim Hortons or, you know, somewhere <laughs> else. So you can uh, you can do ministry because ministry is who you are it's not what you do um so when it comes to i am they tell me a little bit about the music the the style of music you know what you're trying to accomplish through the music yeah yeah and and even what you said uh, you know you are um you know one thing that we've learned even to take that another step uh, just go even deeper with that is not even who you are but whose you are and we as a as a band as i am they is is really about an identity that christ has given us and um and and when i was saying we've learned more about that in these years uh that we've been a a band um stepping into what that identity means and looks like um so in john chapter 17 jesus is is talking and praying for his disciples and is referring to them as they mm. and uh i am they is is a personalization and own, taking ownership of that identity claiming that identity for ourselves and um that's what we want to do as a band you know it's not about the songs that we're singing it's about the lives that we're living and um this this idea of unity that jesus talks about in that prayer um that was something that just struck a chord with us. And we are all kinds of different people in this band. Like um, you, you, you would look at us and a lot of people are like, you guys are so different, but somehow it just like it clicks. And that's, that's how we all feel. We're like, you know, a band is like a forced family kind of deal, but mm. we, uh, the Lord has brought us together for a reason and, and we recognize um, and, and it's representative of the church at large. And um, the thing that's beautiful is, is that God calls us, he calls us in our diversity, he calls us to unity. And, uh, you know, he says in that prayer, he prays that, that he says to his father, just as I pray that they would be one, just as you and I are one. And um, so that's something that we just want to see happen in the church, happen in mm. Uh, the body of Christ. Um, we all have our differences, but God is calling us to unity, to be together, to to work together, to minister together. Um, Amen. So, hey, Matt, Matt, I, I love that. I love that answer. And again, it fits so well with what you know, Drash Ministries. The idea of you know living out your life well, learning how to to argue well is is really all about you know how do we how do we take this talking and really turn it into walking, and and man you guys are all about That's that. Good. So as you as, as you look at music, you know we're we're coming through. We just today 
is the uh, grand reopening of our area. Uh, we're in we're in phase one of reopening in Western New York finally after all these months. Woo uh, that's, yeah, you guys probably are a little ahead of us. So I have a question about that in a minute. But we have, as a pastor, I have you know been talking to people for the last eight nine weeks, and you know one of their lifelines is music. Um, you know they're listening to your music and, and other music, and you know it's just encouraging them. So as as you look at what you've accomplished in the last 10, 11 years. How have you seen your music come up alongside people? Yeah, gosh, I, it's so hard for me to say we have accomplished anything. Um, you know, and I don't say that in some kind of false humility thing. I just really, the last few years uh, as a band, if anything, we have re recognized our frailty. We have recognized our our our, our weaknesses, um, our, our inability to do it of ourselves. Um, and as a as a ministry, again, um, as I am, they we've even over this last record that we that we tracked, um, we were like. We didn't gonna still be a band. We, there were some days um, before we tracked the last record that we were like, we don't know if we're gonna get to track this next record. We don't know if, if we're gonna be a band tomorrow. And uh, God just showed his faithfulness in, in that time. And uh, I think the important thing for, for us is just to take God's hand, be faithful, walk in the next step, walk in the next, the next moment that he calls you forward to, to pursue him in that. Um, and you know, that's what, that's what led us to, to tracking the, the last record. Um, and then when we got to walk that out, um, I'm kind of going somewhere just <laughs> with saying all this, but, um, there's, there's a song called scars that was on the last record. And mm. that may be kind of like that one song for, for, us as a band and, and a, a song that's meant more not only to us as a band but um we've just heard from more people and um, that have connected with that song and that song has touched them or related to them in a, in a deeper way or in a more meaningful way than maybe any other song that we've ever been a part of. so had we not you know uh you know tr gotten to pursue god in in those really difficult moments we might not have had that song called mm. called scars and we might not have seen and heard these testimonies um that that people have of whether they're facing cancer or whether their family member just passed away or whether or not they've uh you know you know experienced these traumatic um you know uh deals in their lives that have have uh you know borne them these scars in their their own life spiritual physical emotional um things like that and, and so it's incredible um just to see how, how god has come through and continued to to minister um in those kinds of ways through these things that look like impossible situations even in our own lives um i don't know if that answered the question at all <laughs> oh my golly that first of all that that's a great answer now i, I really want to now preach preach on that i i I love to to talk about object uh -huh. lessons and and speak on object lessons. What you just laid out, I see that every day. The, this this temptation that people have to put on a facade that everything's okay all the time. That the Christian life has to mean everything's okay all the time. And and my wife, if she was yeah. not in the other room teaching a little first grader, but if she was out here with you, she'd be saying she loves that <laughs> scar song. Um, and, and she loves it, you know, in, partly because it, it's just real, um, you know, and, and we live in this Christian community where, where we just have to pretend everything's all right all the time or we think we have to. So with that in mind, um, you know, we, we're going through this coronavirus thing and, and people are really fighting that whole thing right there. there there's a lot of scars that have come out of. Um, this situation. People have lost their jobs. People have lost loved ones. People have lost their churches for a season. They've lost their lifelines for a season. So tell me a little bit about maybe personally 
or even as a band, what have you seen? What have you what have you learned uh, from this whole you know last eight, nine, ten weeks? Yeah, uh, gosh, there's there's a lot, right? Uh, we've learned how to do. <laughs> We've learned how to homeschool our kids. <laughs> We've learned how to, uh, um, yeah, there's definitely just practical practical differences that we're experiencing. But there's there are so many um, spiritual lessons that God is, is uh, revealing to us. I think for me, probably the thing that I have come back to the most, and because I've had to come to it, um, is the idea that, Oftentimes we're coming to God, we come to God with our need. We come to him, um, but we don't, we don't always come to him with thanksgiving. Mm. Um, we don't always start with, with thanksgiving in our hearts or on our lips. And uh, that, there's this verse in Philippians, and it says, Don't be anxious for anything. In everything, by mm. prayer and petition, present your, with thanksgiving, it says, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. Jesus. And that verse had a uh, thing that is resonating in my head, in my heart, um, as we walk through this time. And the thing that I want to really just tell people, um, mm-hmm. is this idea of Thanksgiving in the midst of this, this season. And this uh, just new kind of challenge and and trial that we're walking through. Um, Everybody has a prayer, right? Everybody has a a trial, a uh, just this 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 weight, this heaviness. Um, We're all experiencing it all across the globe. Um, But God has called us to bring those things to Him, not only to you know cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us, but with thanksgiving present your request to god Mm. um and we're all searching for that peace right now and it's laid it's spelled out right there for us if we would bring bring our requests with thanksgiving we would count our blessings we would uh just begin to give thanks for the the beautiful necessities that that he continues to meet in our in our lives um that we would experience the peace of God. We would enter that, that, that place, that fortress of peace that he provides us. That's fantastic. Now, listen, I, I want to be cognizant of, uh, of time. So do you have time for another couple questions? Yeah, man, let's go. <laughs> okay. So, so listen, I think that there's a disconnect sometimes between, you know, people and and their perception of what other people are doing and when it comes to the music world i I think that probably along with the pastoral world that those two things are are are, tend to be the areas where people have this misperception you know like where we're not actually real people um and so when when you guys first heard about this whole you know shutting down of things you know and all that kind of stuff I, i think the average person just thinks well you know i am they didn't get to sing some songs for a while but how did it how did it really affect besides like the homeschool and stuff how does it really affect i am they yeah i mean we didn't so we tour obviously as a band that's how we make a living and now we don't tour in 2020 so uh you know that means it's essentially like getting laid off you know it's you don't have any income um, coming in uh you are you know another another thing maybe that people aren't thinking about is the fact that we spend a good amount of time a a lot of time away from our families away from home while we're touring and now we are we're at home like everybody else um with our families which is so awesome um i i love the fact that i'm at home with my two kids and i have a first grader too actually just finished first grade and a little uh, three-year-old girl as well. Um, you know, I get to be home with my wife and kids, but it's it's a whole different dynamic. You know, it's like, it's definitely relearning, like, you know, how, how do we function in this kind of way? And, you know, there's probably some moms and families out there that can relate, you know, you're home from your job and 
gosh, I've never been with my kids this this long through <laughs> day after day after day or whatever it is. Um, yeah, we're definitely experiencing that and trying to figure that out our, ourselves. And uh, but yeah, and then as a band, we're trying to come together and creatively move forward because we don't believe God just stopped or like he was surprised or, uh, you know, didn't have uh, intentions for us to carry ministry forward. And so it's like, all right, Lord, well, where is the avenue that we can still reach people, still still be a, a beacon of hope and light um, in, in this time? And so, yeah, we've, we've come together and gotten uh, the chance to connect with people in, in new, new kind of ways. So, um, yeah. Excellent. So let me let me wrap a, a couple more questions in with what you just said yeah. and, and make it one question sure. so then I can cheat. Um, the question would be, as, as we're imagining right now reopening. So so again, it, it feels like somebody just took the cork out of a bottle in our little area, you know, and everybody's rushing out to figure out, all right, what does reopening mean? What stores can we go to? Where can we, you know, can we get together? I um, and my family, we have a family Sunday dinner every Sunday with my mom and my siblings. Um, but because that's yeah, a gathering awesome. of over 10 people, um, we're looking at it and saying, well, can we can we start Sunday dinners up again? Can we can we get together? So as I am yeah. they is imagining reopening, what does that what's that look like? And what are you guys reimagining as you look for new avenues and and things to do? Yeah, we're we're um, so. All right. Well, I got this right in front of me. It's actually still got coffee stains on it, too. Um, we put together this little uh, thing called home together. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. there's our it's our it's our mugs on a mug. Um, but home together, the living room worship tour, uh, we came together and we were like, what if we did online shows? We've never done that before, um, but maybe we can go and play music and, and, you know, play some songs, play songs, connect with people that way. See how, and the Lord totally like this, this awesome opportunity to connect with people, not just in one room, but across the globe. We got, we got to see people, you know, on the other side of the world that we wouldn't otherwise get to, you know, connect with. Um, and it's been really cool because, in a time that we could have just shut down and we could have just been snuffed out and said, oh, you know, well, there goes our shows. I, I guess we're just home and we'll just wait for things to, to reopen. And God gave us this other opportunity to connect with people in a new and fresh mm -hmm. kind of way. And it's awesome. We've gotten to like, you know, people can type messages and we can type messages back. And um, so it's kind of a cool interact. It's more interactive. Amen. Again, we get to connect with other people and more people um, in different places. We get to see, you know, that thing I was talking about, the whole idea of unity that birthed our band. Um, we get to see that in a new kind of way because this person in, uh, you know, Europe is talking person in Kansas and encouraging each other. They can type to each other and encourage message, uh, send scriptures or send songs that are encouraging them or things like that. And so it's cool how this is pulling us all together and, and unifying the body of Christ in a new kind of way. Amen. I love that. I, I love that, you know, the church, anything can come against the church and the church ain't, ain't going to fall, right? It's always going to get creative and see God continue to move. Hey Amen. One of the things that I love about what's happening, one of the things that our ministry really about a year and a half ago started thinking about was how do we go from using the internet to just decipher, disseminate information to being real ministry. Yeah. And, and what you just said, that interaction, you know, the fact that you can you can really interact with people if you want to. It's an it's an amazing thing. All right. So let me finish up by saying, all right, what's What's up next for I Am They? What are you looking forward to in the, the near future? These online uh, concerts, you know, are, are, are great. But what are you looking forward to in the summer or in the fall? Or when do you think you can start touring? And then second with that is how do people come up alongside and, and really help you guys out right now? 
Yeah, thank you. Um, we are actually in the studio right now. Um, we just tracked our first single off the next record, which we're pumped about. Um, and that single is, I don't even know if I could say, I haven't said this anywhere, but it's called Faithful God. And uh, I just think that it is like the banner message of this record of really what, what we're all experiencing right now, God's faithfulness in the midst of, you know, this, this stuff that we're facing. Um, and yeah, so we're, the month of June, we're going to be, you know, really interesting probably because studio track and a record, we're all together. It's, co it's creative, it's collaborative. You're pinging ideas off each other. Um, and this has been completely different. They only allow like one person in the studio at a time to track a vocal or a guitar or what have you. And so it's really weird, but, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be really special just in its, in its own way. God's mm -hmm. going to do something special with this, um, with this thing. So that's what we're doing. We're excited about that. New music is coming. It's right around the corner. Um, and then hopefully I'm praying that, that the Lord would, that this timeline, uh, will just all fit right together that right when the record comes out, hopefully we will be able to be back on the road and we can just go right into playing the new songs, um, and start touring this new record. Um, we're hoping maybe come September, uh, things will actually start to open up again and, you know, it might be a slow start, but we're just excited to get out and see people and, you know, be back mm -hmm. out there playing music again and connecting with people. So, yeah. Amen. So now where do people get the mug? So where do we get mugs on a mug? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, our website is um, the place to go. Yeah. I am they band dot com. And uh, you can just Google I am they. But we're on there. All of our music is still on there. Uh, you know, if you still want to su support the band that way, um, that's awesome. We're so thankful, so appreciative of just the way, you know, different ministries like you guys and radio stations out there and um, people streaming the music and things like that, that, you know, it's, it definitely helps. And um, so we're, we're just thankful and, and hopefully it ministers still to, to people out there. Um, you can still hear music. You can still stream music. Um, you can still be encouraged. I love that we don't just play songs, but we play truth and we are singing mm -hmm. truth. And that's what we need in this time. Um, we need to hear the promises of God yeah. and the truth yeah. of God. And we need to be reminded of his goodness. Um, so I know we just keep worship playlists going on in our house. And <laughs> it's good for us. It's good for the kids. So, um, yeah, that's that's another way that... Um, you know, it definitely uh, is helpful to us as well. So, Amen. Well, we are speaking of grateful, unbelievably grateful for your time and for just more importantly you. for your message. Um, what what an incredible message! It goes along so well uh, with the ministry that we're attempting to do. The the idea of just encouraging people to live out their lives 